Um, what's your memory of how Friends of the Caw, why Friends of the Caw came to be? Dredging was the initial impetus for the formation of the group, and it was, of course, as everybody knows, um, first organized by Lance and Patty, and I knew them. They were friends, and I love rivers. Mm -hmm. I grew up in St. Louis, and we had the Merrimack River mm -hmm. that we used to picnic on and float on, and then there's the Gasconade River in southern Missouri. I spent a lot of my childhood um, recreating on rivers. It was before uh, most of the large reservoirs were built, so people still got on the river. And uh, although I think Lake of the Ozarks was, had been built by that time. But anyway, I love rivers. I was behind the cause. Uh, I knew that it wasn't directly about pollution that they were concerned about, but the the more widespreading effects of what dredging would do to cause pollution. Mm. So and, and so I started going to the meetings and eventually became a board member and um, am still a strong supporter. So how did you decide to join or become affiliated with Friends of the Cause? Because I supported their cause, mm -hmm. and I wanted to help with the, with the, help them achieve their goal of stopping the dredging okay. in whatever way I could. Okay. And then uh, at that time, they were building recreation right on the river mm -hmm. during your term. Um, can you talk about that? Like, how did those float trips start, or what was the early days of the access? Well, it was so fun, because we had to wrangle boats from people who did float trips on, like, the Buffalo River. Oh, other and outfitters? Other outfitters, <laughs> yeah. And bring them up here. Because from that far away? Yeah, from that far away. In fact, the time that the access Kansas, or access sandbar thing oh, was yeah. done, we were still, or I would, I would, I would say they it was Mike Caldwell mostly who was you know, the ringleader of all that. But uh, and they used to the you mean the big float trips. Uh huh. So anyway, yeah. How did the recreation aspect oh. of Friends of the Coast start? Oh well, because to get people to understand the importance of the river and the beauty of the river and want to protect the river, they needed to get out on it and experience it. So why not offer float trips as a opportunity to educate people and let them have some fun. Mm -hmm. And But access was a problem at that point. You mentioned the sandbar. So the sandbar message, right? Yeah. So how did that... Well, tell me about that. Well, story. my recollection... Was that when you were on the board? I, would, I don't know if I was on the board at that time. Before that? Or not. Yeah. But um, Craig Thompson was behind that. That was oh, his, okay. I think, my recollection is, was... He took the no, picture, wait, he right? he took the picture. Uh -huh. Somebody yeah. said that'd be a great idea to do that because we had access to somebody who could take the picture. And so, <clears throat> yes, in accessing it then, there was no boat ramp, and I'm trying... I think we went... It was from Lecompton to Lawrence, right? Yeah. Um, so I was on one of those. I don't think it was the access one, but I remember seeing the ad in the Journal World 1996, I had just moved here. I'm like, that sounds fun. Yeah. And like you said, hundreds of people, like, I swear there was 100 boats. Yeah. I don't know how you all organized that. Well, <laughs> yeah. So like school buses out to Lecompton, and mm -hmm. so we were like in Grumman canoes. and Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so fun. It was fun chaos. Did you recreate on your own, like just some as friends? Yeah, by the time, by that time, I, you know, was working full time and had kids and my opportunities to have just good, clean fun were more limited. Mm -hmm. So I haven't as much lately than I used to do. But yeah, mm -hmm. we used to go out together and do some floats. Mm -hmm. Float the Wakarusa a couple times, too. That's a real nice river to float. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so looking at, you know, the span of Friends of the Caw over 30 years, what do you think are um, significant accomplishments mm. in your view? What 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 has Friends of the Cod done for the river and for the community? Or what? Well, one of the significant accomplishments in partnership with Wildlife and Parks is all the new access mm. points that have been installed. That's just wonderful. So people don't need to have an organized group to be able to do it. They just can go by themselves. And I think the 
people recreating on the river has increased dramatically, but I don't have any numbers, but mm -hmm. just from what I hear and see and people that talk about having done it. Mm -hmm. And uh, another big accomplishment is uh, draw, drawing attention to the dredging issue, issue and having a huge influence on how that progressed through the years and also having a voice in the legislature to, mm. to uh, be a voice that was heard finally about mm -hmm. it, that we weren't just, you know, environmentalists that, with a cause. It was really something that was important and to the economy and to the livelihood of not just the dredgers, but a lot of people with the damage that it caused. And it's drinking water. And right? it's drinking water. <laughs> Educating people. Yeah, educating people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, any other like significant changes you've seen more recently? Like, like um, a lot more presence. I think Friends of the Call has a lot more presence and it's more recognizable by a wider group of people. So that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, I'm not on the board anymore and I haven't been to some events most recent events, so I don't really have a first-hand mm -hmm. gauge of what's going on, although I still am in contact with Don on a frequent basis. And uh, But the most of the board members, I don't know them anymore. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the initiation of the group, there's this... Uh, I don't know, saying, there's the, there are these four sentences that's about how a group or any relationship for that matter forms and it's forming storming norming and performing ah, and i mm. and that's always stuck with me i can't remember where i heard it but i thought it was mm -hmm. pretty astute and i think that in the in the evolution of an organization yeah yeah and that's pretty much what friends of the Caw did uh-huh and they got to performing finally and oh. not finally i mean mm -hmm. is anything like that growing does, pains yeah growing pains Sure. So I think their performance is really, really good now. And Dawn is so present in the newspaper, and she's respected. Mm -hmm. She's a voice mm -hmm. for the river, and that's just wonderful, and she's listened to. Mm -hmm. And that's an incredible accomplishment. Great. And, and that's because of the riverkeeper position, too, that yeah. was initiated way back when. Like, yep. I mean, Dawn's the third riverkeeper, I think. No, so fine. that would have been about in... 1999 or 2000 when the river keeper initiative was mm. uh, started and i told you the other day and i hadn't thought of this for a long time but i was at a, at the time i worked for the department of health and environment and i ran this program called the on-site wastewater program which deals with Septic systems and lagoons and private sewer systems, mm, anything wow. that's not connected to a public sewer. <clears throat> and that's important stuff, too, because it can put groundwater. Mm. And so as part of that, every year I got to go to this conference, the National On-Site Wastewater. <laughs> yeah. Catchy title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and one of, the t and one, the, one of the very first times I went to it, Robert Kennedy, Jr., was the keynote speaker uh -huh. and that was really fun yeah. I was like wow because it was before he you know went off the rocks <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. and he was just promoting the Riverkeeper program and so you can kind of see how that would be uh, relevant to that conference but I don't know how they got him but there he was and so after that, I came home and told the board members that there's this national organization ah. called the Riverkeepers. You were the one. Well, I don't think we'd ever heard of it before, so I think it was Mike Caldwell sent him a poster of the... Uh -huh. um, oh, yeah, I remember there was a watercolor mm -hmm. poster yeah. of the Kansas River. and signed at Kansas Riverkeeper. And um, we got a either a letter or a phone call, or M Mike did, about that you can't use that. Oh, he signed at Kansas Riverkeeper? Yeah, be well, because... Yeah, I mean, it was an they were unofficially Kansas River yeah, Keepers. Yeah, I think yeah. we may have been calling them Kansas, ourselves Kansas River Keepers. But anyway, okay. and uh, whoever was communicating with them said, well, what do we do? How do we become you a said, river you, keeper? You can't use that? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. trademarked. <laughs> yeah. It was like, what? But uh, so that's how we... Then you found out how to become out. an official... And we made an application, and then we became... I mean, it's an official thing. It's, it's a National Alliance. Yeah, it's... Yeah. 
You can't just call yourself a river keeper unless you're a member of the Alliance. So that's how that came about. And it's really unique for the whole Midwest yeah. to have any sort of keeper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just remembered this, too. Um, so as a, in the process of us becoming an official organization, they paid. The organization paid for one of us to attend their national conference river rally. I mm. It's still called, or maybe they don't even have it anymore. I don't know. But so I got to go. Oh. And it was in Malibu. And <laughs> hey, <laughs> I know at Pepper, we stayed at Pepperdine University. And um, there were river keepers. And again, this was about in the early 90s. It, and there were river keepers, such as they were from all over the country, probably 30 of them. And I, I was the only one from the Midwest, Nebraska. None of our surrounding states had one. And we all had to get up and say, you know, why we're here and what, what our issue is. Or, and I don't think any of the other ones said um, dredging. I, we were, I was the only one that said that ours was dredging. Because we have the great sand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Others were like, my river is buried and about daylighting the river. And then the ones from the east were about industrial pollution. Huh. And, but nothing, nobody else had dredging. So that was kind of unique. Still, I think there are only a couple other river keepers in the entire Midwest. Yeah. There's, I can't even say. How do you think the river would be today if Friends of the Con never happened? Well... I think the dredging would be a lot more widespread. I don't think it would have ever have uh, changed its nature, how it does business, and sought alternatives, uh, and that would not be a good thing. And it would have, it would have just harmed it, co continued to degrade it, and then that would be affecting all the water suppliers downstream, as the, you know, a lot of implications for it. I think that Friends of the Car in the beginning, another thing that they accomplished was putting. A lot of uh, emphasis to KDHE, who was the regulatory agency, to clean up this mm -hmm. river and make the sewage from Topeka stop coming down and this. And and that was contentious because Friends of the Cod then had no standing. Mm. We were just an environmental organization with a cause. But... Um, so, but I think that KDHE does do a good job to the extent that they have under their authority. So I'm not sure I'd say that the pollution would be less, although now that we have somebody reporting it, that has helped a lot because otherwise it was no, not seen. And just knowing that there's going to be accountability, any, yeah. anything, anyone who does anything on the river, yes. they're going to be seen. Yeah, so that's... Eventually. So if the if the river keeper weren't out there, I think it would be a much bigger peril. Mm -hmm. So fifty years from now, what do you hope Friends of the Cause legacy is? All the things we've been talking about. That um, I mean, the you know things are going to be different, new challenges, climate, all that. Yeah. Who knows what? <laughs> I know it's going to be. You know, it's going to be water so issues are going to. Mm -hmm. our front and center. Hopefully they'll be thankful for what was accomplished. But yeah, who knows? I mean, it, there could be drought, more droughts, more floods. Um, we just don't know. But 50 years from now, I just wish them the best. Because mm. I've done every, uh, you know, I tried. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your service and your well, effort. I, I just and, mean that, you know, I don't know I know. Where I know. would it be without? Yeah. And, you know, kids, grandkids, the you young bet. people. Um, I just look know. at them and go, good luck. <laughs> and at some point, they're going to want to ask questions to those of us who won't be around. Um, and that's why we're doing this. So I think it's wonderful. Thank you for participating. So what do you think people don't understand about the river, or Friends of the Caught. What do you wish people understood about it? That, that it's a lifeline. It's the lifeblood of part of large part of the Midwest with its agriculture and industry and water supply. And that for that reason, it's a very important resource that needs to be protected. The very best we can do. Mm. Mm -hmm. Drinking water. We always say that. Yeah. 800,000 people. And it's only going to 
the increase. Yeah, what are sure. we going to do? Uh, I mean, it's already totally allocated. There mm. is no more water available than what's... Finite yeah. resource. Yeah. Um, and as far as recreation or, you know, the river itself, what do you think people don't get? That it's there and available and really fun to do mm -hmm. most of the time. <laughs> yeah, it can be arduous, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Kansas. I, I mean, like I kind of referred to earlier, m most water recreation is now, I think, done on the reservoirs. The boating and even the fishing at the outfalls. And so the river has lost its importance be partly because of that as a place where People say, oh, let's go to the river instead of, oh, let's go to Clinton Reservoir. Mm -hmm. I hope people continue to utilize it and enjoy it. I mean, there still will always be a population that likes running water, not flat water. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that'll sustain and grow and the interest in protecting it will continue to be, um, you know, standing on the shoulders of those who care. Mm -hmm. And as Cynthia mentioned last hour... Um, just the availability of kayaks alone. I mean, people are out there looking for places to paddle. Yeah. And, you know, we've got this incredible resource here for recreation. Yeah. With all the ramps, all that. Do you have any great fond memories of being on the river or oh. any stories you could tell about fun times on the river? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were all fun. Um, <laughs> did you camp just, a lot? Not a lot, but I did a lot of day trips. Uh -huh. And uh, just being on the sandbars and exploring and the camaraderie mm -hmm. that is always with it is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so nothing, one particular thing sticks out. I just enjoyed them all. Mm -hmm. Great. Any last things you want to say about the river or the organization? Um, I just what, think, hope for the future. Or? <laughs> I already said I don't know. I don't know what to do mm -hmm. about the future. Mm -hmm. Just just whatever I can while I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I hope Friends of the Cause continues and in, well into the future. Fifty years from now, I hope it's still there. We hope. Yeah. Hope. Oh. Well, thank you so much. That You're was welcome. great. You're We're welcome. gonna wrap it up there. I had and fun.